So here now, just like many other animals in the Caribbean and Neotropics, this creature looks a bit confused. Like it didn't know if it wanted to be a maniku, a turtle, a rat, or a pig. This is the tattoo. Nine-banded armadillo. Nine-banded long-nosed armadillo. Hoover hog. Common long-nosed armadillo. Kasuko. Armadillo narizon comun. Molita. Tattoo galina. Poor man's pork. Panza sign. Decipus novem cinctus. Despite having the name nine-banded armadillo, it doesn't necessarily have nine bands. Some individuals have more or less, and some have nine. But one of the other names, tattoo, spelled differently depending on where you are from, means undercover. And that is the name I am accustomed to using. So, for the rest of the video, I'll be calling this animal tattoo. Of the many species of the cippus, this species is the most widespread, mainly found in forests, jungles, shrublands, and grassy areas, also sometimes in marshy areas in the Western Hemisphere, from the southern part of the United States, throughout Central America, and the majority of South America, and even in the Caribbean, including Trinidad and Tobago. Tattoos spends its resting hours underground or in thick grass and shrubs. But once it's night or the temperatures is right, they begin to get up and become active, either foraging, looking for a mate, or digging another burrow. Yep, tattoos normally have more than one burrow and would spend different times at each burrow. Sometimes even multiple tattoos, often of the same sex, would share a burrow at the same time. Their burrows sometimes has more than one point of egg entry or exit depending on the circumstances. The burrows range from 12 inches in depth but could go more than 12 feet underground and sometimes 6 to 25 feet in length. I've seen it. With their good skills in digging and habit of making multiple burrows, they unintentionally make homes and refuge for many animals like amphibians, snakes, agoutis, tortoise and turtles and many more. Generally, Tattoos don't like to spend long hours outside their burrows. Females normally don't go far from their burrows, but males will explore a good distance from their burrows in search of food and a mate, also to fight other males. Tattoos are omnivorous, feeding on a wide range of things, but they mainly feed on insects. They also eat some fruits, flowers, shoots, buds, eggs, mushrooms, fish, crustaceans, mollusks, small reptiles like snakes, young turtles and lizards, birds and small mammals. Once they can catch it and overpower it, they would eat it. Tattoos don't have very good eyesight, so they search for food using their excellent sense of smell and hearing. When it comes to searching for arthropods aka insects etc, they would stick their long nose in the soil and thick vegetation and scratch the surface about 8 inches deep while moving forward periodically stopping to lap up worms and grubs and arthropods with their long sticky tongue and viscous saliva. And this method of looking for food makes a small drain-like trench that can go on for a while. Now, if it comes across anything bigger, once they touch the animal with their nose and identify it's something bigger, they will bite on and pull up to make sure the critter is in their control. Then they use their front claws to push their food down while still lifting their food up with their mouth. This movement causes the critter they are feeding on to rip and if that wasn't enough, they don't really have canines for cutting. Tattoos have a few peg-like teeth for crushing their food so while they rip their food apart, they will also be crushing their prey with their teeth. With their fast metabolism and big appetite, they can consume quite a lot. Tattoos can travel one kilometer in an hour in search for food. Tattoos have very small eyes and to top it off their eyesight isn't that good. But as stated before, they have excellent hearing and sense of smell. They are generally skittish animals and the slightest thing could give them a good scare. When they feel as if they are in danger, they will begin to move or run towards one of their burrows. If they are startled immediately, they will jump straight up in the air, land back on the ground and begin running. 
just like a cartoon character. Tattoos can reach speeds of up to 30 miles per hour. If cornered, they will try to jump out of the situation. Tattoos can jump 3 to 4 feet in the air. One of the methods they use for escaping a threat is to head to water. Tattoos are excellent swimmers and can hold their breath for around 6 minutes. If jumping or running away doesn't work, they will bite or use their claws and powerful legs to defend themselves. Unlike other species of armadillos, the tattoo, aka 9 banded armadillo, cannot fully roll up in a ball. Instead, they sometimes curl their heads under their bodies. Sometimes, if anything is digging behind them to get at them inside their burrows, the tattoo will also begin digging to burst out of the ground or to make the burrow deeper and harder to get them. Remember when I said sometimes their burrows make home for other animals? Well, Sometimes living in the tattoo burrows could be a snake. Many times I've heard stories of hunters going to dig out a tattoo and digging out a balsane or a zanana instead. The snake usually lives in the first part of the burrow near the entrance and that is a good security system for the tattoo. Now I don't know why the snake don't bite the tattoo but more studies need to be done on that. Despite sometimes living in the same burrow, Tattoos are mainly solitary and territorial animals. They use their pee, feces, and a substance secreted from their feet, eyelids, and nose to mark their territory. Tattoos tend to express an aggressive and volatile nature in high densities and chase, kick, and box each other. Tattoo mating occurs in either the months of July or August, with the fertilization and implantation taking precedent in the upcoming March or April. It differs depending on which region they are in. But after they are successful, the gestation period will be roughly 120 days or 4 months. During that time, the zygote splits into 4 identical embryos and that process is called polyembryony. Female tattoos will give birth to quadruplets, all the same sex and with their eyes open and is able to move soon after birth. Their weaning period is around 4-5 to five months, after which they will begin foraging with their mother. A tattoo will reach sexual maturity in one year. Tattoos can breed and live up to 15 or 20 years in the wild, but it has been recorded in captivity, some individuals living 23 years. They can reach a length of around 25 to 42 inches and that is from the tip of the nose to the tip of the tail and weigh around 14 to 22 pounds, 6 to 10 kilograms. Because of the way the tattoo is, tattoos don't have much predators. Now some species of wildcats, crocodilians, boas and wild canines may prey on them but their hard shell claws ability to swim, jump, dig, smell and hear makes it challenging to catch them. Humans are the only successful predators of the tattoo. There's a lot of unique and interesting things and not so interesting things about the tattoo. Things like the fact that they are the only animals that can carry leprosy. But it is said that the only way you could get leprosy from a tattoo is if you eat certain parts raw or interact with a tattoo that carries leprosy feces. But I live in Trinidad and Tobago and there hasn't been any instance of humans getting leprosy from tattoos in TNT. As of the making of this video, tattoos are not rare. They are of least concern and that is good seeing that they can breed so well and thrive in most tropical environments. But tattoos are one of my favorite animals and I like the way they look, behave and taste. So as you all know, I am the wildlife master and until next time, blessings and bless out.